combat and battles the biggest portions of mountain blade 2 bannerlord in this video today i want to guide you through the combat system in the game discussing things like chambering fainting and other fun stuff then we'll close the video out going over the battlefield commands as well as some tips on how to get the most of your field engagements or out of your field engagements i won't be covering sieging in this video we'll have a separate one for that and you might have gleaned a good bit of this information before diving into this video but this will act as a means of covering anything you might have missed or help you with things such as breaking a unit into two, two separate ones during battle creation and what have you. You can quickly navigate to any part of the video that interests you the most using the chapters in both the timeline and the description. And if you've not yet picked up Bannerlord, you can do so using the link to my Nexus store in the description and pinned comments. Uh, Nexus gets Steam keys directly from the developer, and it's a great way to support the channel, ensuring my puppy has an endless supply of Kong toys to piss me off with. As always, guys, if you end up enjoying the content, please don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe. Help me defeat the greatest, hardest battle in Bannerlord, the YouTube algorithm. Let's get started on the ultimate guide to combat and battles in Bannerlord. Loading into a custom battle, we're going to go over some options before we actually even talk about specific combat mechanics like blocking and fainting and parrying and all that action. So before we jump in there, you can see these little arrows that are at the top, the right, the left, the bottom of the screen. This is how the game probably looks by default for you. I've turned these off because they are kind of irritating for me. But let's go through how these work because this is your both your block and your attack direction. And we're going to go ahead and press escape, go to options, and then go to gameplay. Um, I don't know how you would access this on console. I apologize. So going into controls, we can see control block direction and attack direction. Right now for me, it's by look, but you can change it to by movement. By look is what you're going to have by default, right? If you look to the right and block to the right or, and press block, you will block to the right. You can, in single player, use auto, in which case it will automatically block to the proper direction if you press right click or if you press block it doesn't mean that it will automatically block for you no matter what you actually have to press the block button so let's let's just show this off by going to by movement and you can see here i'm looking this way my character though is still attacking over the top and if i move left right now i'm seeing the, the block direction that i'm going a lot of people prefer this way I'm a big fan of the look portion with the uh, with uh, the camera, but just do whatever one is best for you and your play style. You might not have even known that this was available to you and you were suffering and, and struggling with the previous way. So this is a lot better if you're into that. Um, also though, you have some other things to go into. So let's go into by look direction, by look direction for myself. If you want, you can go down a little bit further, 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 further is not a word, but further into the crosshair type. And you can change this from four part by default to three part. If you want a different reticle when you're say aiming things with a throwing weapon, or if you're aiming things with a um, bow and arrow. Some of this other stuff we're going to be uh, changing when we talk about the battle section so I'll, I'll hold off on it but the other one that i wanted to show is show attack direction i by default have that off because i don't like having those arrows there i understand that if i'm looking this way i'm going to block that way kind of get a good feel for it i've just been playing the game long enough but those are some quick options i wanted to go through before going into the next sections of this video so another thing that the game doesn't really talk much about is momentum swings. And momentum swings are pretty crucial. Uh, they can be very tricky to get off and land reliably. You're going to see me miss a whole bunch in this right now. But still, um, it's a nice way to kind of continue the momentum of an attack because it creates less time in between an individual attack. So if you happen to break through uh, someone's guard and you're already getting some hits in, this allows you to get more hits in before they can get their guard back up or whatever the situation is. Now, the ability to do this is going to be dependent upon the handling of your weapon i'm using a axe in this because the handling on it is like 94 so it makes it very easy for me to actually get this off reliably but something like a spathion which maybe has a um 81 handling it just makes it so that your next left click to continue the swing has to be a little bit later in the swing and i'll show off what i mean here so if I go ahead and press left and attack and right or an attack, whatever it is, I'm just going to go ahead and swing my weapon, right? I'm just swinging it. No big deal. Now, if you time this properly and attack again, you can't just spam attacking. Like if I'm, 
This is me spamming and attacking. It doesn't do anything, right? You have to time it and you have to choose a direction because then you'll carry that momentum from that swing into another one very quickly. So let's see if I can get this in one go here. I already failed. Basically, any time that... There we go. That's one. I think I'm getting performance anxiety. There we go. Any time that the blade, rather than stopping and then coming back to my side, continues into the next attack, that is a momentum. There you go. There's one right there. It's usually like the, the arm will make a very exaggerated movement as it travels over the head and to pursue into the next one. There you go there. And again, like I said, it's 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 hard. It's hard to even talk. It's hard to talk and illustrate this point, but you will find that this is very challenging. Uh, my recommendation for learning it, though, is just simply to grab an axe and learn it through that because they tend to be very quick on the swing and you'll get to be able to get a sense for how the timing works before moving into something with less handling and kind of struggling from there. But this is very crucial to kind of mastering the arena and getting a lot of really good hits in if you are in a one on one scenario in a battlefield, maybe even a two or three on one in a siege or battlefield as well so definitely try to work on your momentum attacks in addition to those momentum attacks there is the ability to faint or essentially it's like animation canceling so i left click and i swing right well if i hold down if i press left click then immediately press right click i cancel the animation <laughs> animation animation and go into a block this is really helpful in multiplayer but it also can trick the ai the ai will try to guess where your swing's coming from if they see you going like this they'll block up top but you can kind of combo these things together let's see if i can do this properly it's again hard to narrate and do it at the same time so if i left click right click left click in a different direction i'm basically going to faint an attack so I'm holding down left click. I'm going to come this way. Nope, tricked you. Aha. It's different than if I just went like this. That's two different speeds versus that. So you have the ability to feint the attack as long as your character hasn't made the ha. So it's basically you have like that first like 10% of the movement to actually cancel it out. So... Use this to feint on your enemy. So you go up and across, oh, right and up. And if you're playing against the AI and you get uh, to higher levels of AI, they'll do this to you. You'll see it. You'll see them even coming in with a big right swing. And they're charging at you with a big right swing. And then they stop and go over the top. So use this to your advantage. It's, it's the easier one of the two techniques we just talked about to learn because it's really just it's really just bouncing your finger across the the attack and block button i'm sure this would be pretty easy to do on console um it's very easy to do on pc but definitely learn your feints because they can help you out a bit outside of feints and something that i can't show right now we're going to put this all together and see it all uh work in an arena is the ability to chamber someone so if you see someone going like this to you and you don't have quick enough time to block if you match their attack then you should, and you release at the right time, your blades will hit and your chamber off, chamber off of one another. If It's basically like using it almost like a block. So if you're using a sword with no shield and you realize, okay, I can't do this block quick enough, I'm just gonna attack the way that they're attacking. Then your weapons will hit and you'll chamber. You'll hear like a psh, psh, of, of the two weapons. I, I don't, that does not sound like two weapons hitting together, but the two weapons will clang together and that's considered chambering. Uh, parry, repost, whatever you want to call it, even though parry and repost are two diff entirely different things. But uh, basically, you're just matching the attack of the individual. In addition to chambering, you have the ability to kick by just simply pressing E. I don't know what it is on console, or holding right click or holding block and shield bashing. Now, when you shield bash, you want to try and not move. If you do this, you are going to give the unit a chance to recover from their stagger. If you press this, hit with the bash, then immediately attack, you will hit their opening. And if you get the perk that allows them to be stunned for longer than the last perk in the uh, one-handed tree that allows them to be stunned for even longer, you'll be able to do wonders to them after a shield bash. But those are some pretty crucial things to understanding the combat mechanics in this game. We're going to put everything together into an arena just to kind of show you how some of this works. But let me quickly show off some other things real fast. And this might be better suited in the battle section, but still, I'm just going to go over right now. I've got a number of weapons on me to show off some stuff. So, if you press F, there's a G, it's G, you will drop whatever you have, and then you can hold down F to pick it up, or just press F to pick it up. Um, 
you can also hold down G to take a look at what is on you to determine like, okay, you know what? I want to drop that weapon again. And then just press F to pick it back up. Now, some weapons, like this weapon in general, is a hand and a half. It is not simply just a two-handed weapon. It'll have a denotion, I can show you right here, that this says both one-handed and two-handed. That means that I have the ability to use it as one or two hands. And if I'm using my shield, I'm gonna just press down on my, uh, my uh, scroll reel and that's gonna put it away from me. And you'll see that I'm using it now in two hands. If I press X, it drops to one hand. Make a little cool twirly animation. So X just kind of switches my modes. This will work for javelins too. If you have a javelin and you press X, you'll turn into melee mode with it and you'll be able to poke people. But those are just some things I wanted to kind of quickly mention because you might not have known that you could actually do a hand and a half and have it be one-handed or two-handed. Or, or you probably didn't know that you could drop a weapon and go pick up another one. Or you realize, okay, you know what? I don't need this bow anymore. I'm about to siege a castle gate. I'm gonna drop the bow and go pick up a two-handed weapon. Or, you know, I don't even have a shield. I'm gonna go pick up a shield. And you have the ability to kind of quickly cater those things um, by just dropping and picking up whatever you need. Okay, we jumped into a practice fight. And practice fights at arenas, uh, aside from arenas themselves, are really great ways to just kind of learn and hone your skills. Uh, there's no cost to it, and you'll have tons of opponents to kind of chop through, so. Yeah, just get, just get chopped in the face. You're, not, you're definitely not going to be doing 144 damage because you want to have 180 skill. But let's see here. Oh, I was going to do a shield bash on him. Let's see if we can shield bash this guy. Remember how I said not to move and I then moved? But yeah, you just pretty much you bash him. You wait. Then you clobber him in the face. Oh, you get hit in the back of the head with a javelin too. You do have to worry about stuff like spears, which can create distance. Now, you'll notice that I am not blocking properly, and that's something to kind of note. If you don't block the direction properly, your shield will take more damage, and you won't mitigate all the damage coming your way. So, you want to try and block to the proper direction if you can. There's a little momentum swing. Oh, 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 the old two-for-one coming in the face with the clobber machine there, huh, buddy? Get your, get your fucking spear out of my face. Okay, good. A little sword-on-sword -sword battle. A quick sword-on-sword -sword battle. But you get the principle here. It's pretty much just you, you try to take advantage of it when you can. And in practice fights, everyone has the same armor, which is nice. I'm also... Oh! Well, you kind of get the point of what's going on here. You try to kind of keep things... Um, you try to kind of keep your distance or use your, your shield to the best of your ability. And when it comes to your shield, don't hold it up the whole time. Like that, that just takes time away from you to, there we go. That's a kind of more proper shield fight, right? You are bash. I mean, it's especially prevalent in spear on spear fights, which take forever if you've done any of the Sturgeon stuff, but if don't keep your shield up when you're running because it just slows you down. You're an easy target for anyone throwing or shooting at you. You drop it. Okay, they threw. They threw something. You, then you kind of go for a, a block. That. Ooh, I thought that was a chamber. Ah, I was going to try to chamber him, but sometimes you need to get into it. Like chambering, I think, is the one mechanic I almost never, ever use in any kind of combat. It's just so... I'm just not good at it. There are some people who are amazing at it, and I did want to bring it up as a point of, of a, an ultimate combat guide, but it's something that I can never reliably do. Five, got 20 more opponents. There's no way I'm making myself through this, but do the practice fights because they don't cost you anything. You make a little bit of money off of it. You'll gain skills, and you get exposed to a bunch of different weapons and you're not just fighting with a sword and a shield the whole time you learn more about the game you learn more about how to engage different enemies and different ports of the f aha block me with your little sword will you like everyone's chucking javelins at me down range and it's wet and wild so that was a, a point where i used that momentum attack to immediately bring me into another attack after missing my first one um and there's you can you can also do this. This is kind of like an old cheesy way to fight. You just keep going to the right of the person. If you're really, really struggling, just keep going to the right and then swing. Like, 
you'll almost always win doing that. Um, the AI has gotten far better with it. It used to be in the game when it first came out, you could just pretty much, pretty much an auto win tactic. I'm almost dead here. That was a chamber. Ugh. And you gotta just constantly be moving too. Oh, I don't know why, why I'm afraid of that shield bash. Ah, but that hopefully gives you a good, good idea on how to do combat a little bit better. Um, there's, you will find that it's just kind of comes down to timing, uh, blocking right when they make contact with you can sometimes speed up your follow through. That's, that's what people on the internet have called a parry in this situation, but it's not a parry in like, say the dark soul sense where you're going to stun lock someone that you go into and you shove their fist in their stomach and pull out like a gleaming heart, like you can in, in, in Elden Ring, something like that. It's not quite like it, but it's also not something that's tried and true. I I've seen times where I've blocked right when someone's made contact and it's not done anything i've seen times where it has so keep those things in mind let's now move into the battle screen so here we are about to jump into a battle now of course you have the things that you would imagine you have your balance of power bar and i'm using some looters because we're going to talk about some initial stuff before we jump into maybe a cool battle on a custom battle who knows um and we have two abilities on here well two things on here two options attack and send troops. Send troops will do a simulation of the battle using your leadership and tactics and any perks within those to give you legs up. So take a look here, we're gonna go to skills, we're gonna go to tactics, and you'll see simulation advantage 28%. So those things are crucial in both leadership and uh, tactics, as well as even some of the, uh, the weapon skills have some things that'll say like, okay, in simulations, uh, when you're attacked in a field battle, 10% more damage in simulations, stuff like that. So you can skew the way that this send troops button works. So keep that in mind. Before we even press attack though, we're going back to the option screen. And we're going to talk about some more stuff. So scrolling down here, uh, we have two big things, unit prioritization and reinforcement wave count. So for unit pri spawn prioritization, what happens is the game will spawn things for you and you can see units spawn according to their position in the party roster that's the way the game had done things from the start up until a couple patches ago but now you can cater to either be high low or homogenous high level units will spawn first with high level low level units will spawn first with low level and homogenous spawn units homogeneously based on their troop types rather than their levels this option will try to fill the ranks with each type of unit at the same ratio and ignore their tiers while doing it so the, this setting above only applies to player starting position or composition. The AI is not affected. I per personally like high level uh, because then I'm just fighting with my best troops up front first. Uh, some people like homogenous because then you get a nice smattering. Uh, units share experience. So it doesn't necessarily matter if high levels go in first because the low levels will still get experience shared to them. With that being said, a low level unit will earn more experience if they're the ones doing the kill. Uh, the, the percentage of experience is shared. And as a, a quick kind of side note to that, don't upgrade all of your units all at once. Like if you have 15 tier one units, wait until, I'm sorry, don't upgrade them piecemeal, upgrade them all at once. <laughs> if you have 15 tier one units, wait until all 15 are ready to upgrade and then do it. Because then they'll share the experience together and go up together rather than having some be a higher level, they'll outpace the others, whatever it is. Now for reinforcement wave count, this sets the number of reinforcement waves that will be spawned in a combat mission. A higher value generally means longer mission duration. On settings lower than unlimited, sieges might be resolved without all troops participating in the fight. So basically what this is saying is the game's going to uh, send you a, a certain number of waves before it resolves the battle. And if you have unlimited, it'll just kind of keep sending those waves at you. When you do sieges, you'll see these waves. Um, you'll The enemy will attack. If their morale breaks, they'll flee. And if you have unlimited on, it'll jump in and say, hey, you want to do another attack? And you press yes. Otherwise, if you have, say, three waves, four or five, when it does three waves of attacks, then the game will auto-resolve the remainder of the battle. This kind of helps streamline some of those fights that you maybe don't want to get into that are maybe a little bit longer than whatever it is. It's all covered through this reinforcement wave count. I have it on high level and unlimited, but you can put it on whatever one that works best for you. Um, 
you have you have lock target which i just don't ever use because of the flow of this game this is not like a one-on-one -on -one witcher game where i'm fighting um a monster and that's something i forgot to talk about in the other um in the other portion of the video but i don't ever lock onto target so that's why I don't have that ever uh, triggered. Visuals here is going to determine the weapon visual vis trail visibility. So of arrows and of a weapon. A weapon has a small little trail at the tip of it. Um, I have it at 50%. But friendly troop banners is really nice here because you can have it at 100% and you see all the troop banners above your army. But if I turn this down, it lowers the opacity so I can actually see what the hell is going on. Strongly recommend that to be at something 25 or lower easily for camera that's going to be your uh, third party and first person view, field of views um, if you want to change those but for your user interface order visual type if you are on a uh, console you probably want to keep it on radial but if you want the old visual style that it had when the game first came out you can switch it to bar and that means and i'll show you in a second here um and the order layout you can change it from default to legacy the way it was in the earliest versions of the game so another big thing too is your report casualties so whenever you're someone dies in combat you'll see in the upper right hand corner it'll say like uh battalion volunteer and then it'll have a little symbol and then it'll say imperial recruit and that would be green or red red means that it was an enemy killed your unit green means uh an ally killed an enemy unit i have it set to only icons or you can just have it be disabled but when it's enabled you have the entire text Britannian volunteer kills imperial recruit with only icons it just shows infantry kills infantry infantry kills infantry infantry kills infantry it's easier to digest it's not as intensive on your system and you just get a good idea of what's going on you can shut it off entirely if you so wish it's up to you I also have report damage shut off this is the thing that's going to show you every little bit of damage that's going on just shut it off it's just too much I really don't like it you can also shut off experience. So if you don't want to see all the little bit of experience that's going on, you can shut that off. And then I've got report personal damage. So if I throw a, a javelin or if I shoot someone with a bow, I want to see what kind of damage it does. Or if I hit someone with my sword, I want to see what kind of damage it does. You can press this oh, and it will shut that off for you. So you have a bunch of ways to kind of uh, cater how you interact with the actual um, battlefield in addition though there is the performance tab you go all the way to the bottom you should have gameplay battle size mine is set to max but this is not simply 1000 soldiers will be on the field it's split between you and the enemy so 500 versus 500 versus the that's the max with the minimum being 100 versus 100 so if you are having performance issues you would go here or if you want bigger battles you would go here so those are a lot of the options that are catered to the battlefield let's actually jump onto the battlefield to talk about some other stuff so I covered a lot of this information in my ultimate beginner's guide, but I want to go into a little bit more right here just to talk about some stuff. So we have our captains across the top that we can put into the captaincy of these respective units. And we have a total of eight formations, formations, units probably in the better, uh, not the great nomenclature here. So eight formations that we can have and or create. And this denotes, you know, what formation this is. And you have to have one formation of it says right there you need to have at least one for more formation of this type to change this formation's type so you have to have a formation of whatever units are in your army but you'd press this button and you have a list of all the commanders that can fill that formation and if i look over if i hover over this individual then hold down alt which i've told is left bumper on console um, this gives me an information gives me information of what this commander would influence in which uh, formations it would influence and how so infantry influence this is all the things that he's going to give bonuses to infantry but you know he's not going to give that many things to cavalry versus myself I'll give tons to everything or Dwayne here good cav good horse archer um, his ranged influence here for Fatima or uh, Fasid and also his banner at the very top it says right there banner marksman flag increases range damage so we're gonna go ahead and put this guy here i mean i deliberately already i already intended him to be there and this guy we're gonna put there and this guy we're gonna put over here because he's more of a cav dude and you know what no this is wrong dude that guy goes there 
And you know what? Let's put all, all, I will lead the horse archers. But that leaves this one dude who's really, really good at cavalry and also really good at uh, infantry. And I want him to control something. I want him to be the captain of something. So we're going to press this button right here. And this gives me an option to create another formation as infantry, ranged, cav, horse archer, infantry, and ranged, or cavalry, and horse archers. I never really use the mixed ones because I like to micromanage the individual units. But let's just go ahead and make another cavalry unit because I know what I want here. And we'll put this guy in that location. Oh, whoops, I guess he's not mounted, so I'm dumb. I'll put him there. Whatever. Fine. But... I can then make a further distinction of this uh, formation of infantry versus this formation of infantry. Press this button. And you know what? I want this to give preference to troops with thrown weapons because maybe I'm playing Batania and have a ton of wildlings. And wildlings are classified as infantry. So we're going to do that. Well, there's only three of those. Well, you know what? You know what? Hey, instead, we're going to give an additional um, preference here to pole arms. And then I'm going to increase this number to 50%. So 50% of my infantry, and we're going to do preference heavy armor and shields over here. So 50% of my infantry is now going to go over to this dude, this formation number five. And it's going to focus on units with throwing weapons and units with pole arms. Versus this is going to focus on units with heavy armor and units with shields. I could press all these buttons if I want. I could press none of these buttons if I want. I can maybe just split them 50-50 like we could just do... Hey, you know what? Here's 50% of my units and 50% of my units. And, and to be totally honest, sometimes you kind of have to cater it yourself there, right? Because it wasn't exactly 50. So you've got them all set up. Everything's good to go. And as long as you've done this once, it will lock in your captains in their respective locations. And you can add more formations if you want, whatever you so wish. But you can also set up all of your units within the bounds of these little small white flags here, gray white flags. So you've got the ability to select one and then drag and drop, right? That can make a really dense formation, a really long formation. By and large, you'd want to do a two to three rank long formation because this enables your units to wrap around another unit. If they are too, too thin, then they won't, they'll just get killed off as they wrap. If they're too dense, then an opposing unit, let's say that this unit was facing me, would simply wrap around on the sides of this unit and be able to do damage. And I'll, I'll show you what that looks like in a custom battle once we jump into it. Furthermore, we have the ability to set any kind of formations outside of their actual placement. So take these archers, for example. I'm going to press F2. Um, this is the radial menu. Remember I said you can change that, right? Options, gameplay just to kind of give you an idea, radial to bar two. So the bar is over here on the left side of the screen. A little bit harder to follow for the intents and purposes of this video, but I wanted to quickly show that off so that you have an idea of what that looks like. And the legacy would change the order of where those things um, are in their respective buttons. So two, we're gonna make this, I want, these are archers and I don't want the archers to deal with as much return fire. So I'm gonna put them in a loose formation and I'm gonna make it a real long loose formation because it doesn't matter. They're not engaging in combat. They just need to shoot their arrows. And we have our horses. Horses, I can put into F2 and I'm gonna put into skein formation because that's the way I like to use them. Same thing here with um, my horse archers, we can do the same thing, but I just kind of keep them in standard line formation because they are gonna do their own thing. They're gonna form a Cantabrian circle. They're gonna take care of it. I wouldn't even worry about it remotely. So let me go ahead and actually remove this. I want everyone back in this first formation to show off another formation configuration. And that is square. So with square, when I ready up, Everyone is going to raise their shields that can raise their shields and they are going to put them into a defensive formation. And you can use this, you can expand this square out as much as you can. It's a little hard to actually get to, to expand out, but it can be expand out. Or you can use circle if you want to say, form a circle around your, uh, your archers, but this can also be pretty deadly, right? You know, if you get too 
too tight of a circle, too thin of a circle, people will push through, too tight of a circle, and you've got no room to move. So you've got these for special formations that you can use. I don't really ever use scatter um, or loose when it comes to infantry, but the other one is the tried and true shield wall. So actually, we're going to move into a custom battle to do this rather than in that previous battle. I, I figured it's a little bit better and easier to take a look at. So let's go ahead and move some units around. Get them placed roughly where I want them. And we'll go into some things. And this is already, we'll put these back into shield wall like we were before. And we'll discuss this. I'll even put myself as the general of them. Just to, I mounted, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Hey, you know what? I, I won't do that. You don't want to put any mounted captain with an unmounted unit because it'll cause an issue with the spacing of the unit. So I'm, I've moved myself from there. So taking a look at this, we have enemies down range. They're just infantry soldiers because this is a custom battle and I catered that. And I'm going to show you how some of this can kind of work out together. So you have a lot of options on what you can do here. You can just simply press F6 and here I'll, whatever delegate command on off is on console i don't know how you would control it on console but f6 the ai takes over and they just do everything from there but you've got a bunch of different ways for your units to actually engage the enemy a lot of ways that they can uh, use ai profiles to do so so my bowmen i'm going to put them back in that loose formation and i'm going to make them real nice and wide so these infantry soldiers they're in shield wall right if I press F1, then F3 to charge, watch how they just they just kind of go. They, they stay pretty well in formation. They're kind of keeping lock and tow. For the most part, though, they are running at the enemy. I'm going to switch this, though, to now go engage. That's F4. They've stopped. They're all locking up to kind of keep those shields a little bit more intact. I did start them on a charge, so it kind of messed up with their unit cohesion. But engage slows the advance down for them and keeps them kind of a little bit more methodical you can see these guys are starting to attack and here's a really good example of something i want to show off i deliberately did not make these guys as long as possible in their actual line formation watch what happens when the uh, the enemy hits them so they've started to wrap around over here right so you can see right here They've wrapped around to the flank, so it doesn't matter that there's a shield wall. They're in the back, they're on the flank of the of my unit, and they're starting to kill their way through. It doesn't matter how impervious my units are to damage with their shields or what ma their max level is. This pretty much enables it so that your units will take more damage. If I had made this line longer, or if I had seen the enemy's line coming at me, and adjusted it to make it longer to match theirs, this wouldn't be the case. I can kind of try to mitigate this by having them just go to charge, but still the damage is done. They're already on the flank, they're already pushing through, and they're collapsing on my soldiers very, very well. So this is just an example of how you have to really keep your line matching the enemies or at least keep it as long as as you can it, and if you say hey the enemy's got a really tight small line you can take advantage of this and you can make yours longer so let's go ahead and reset this and oh and look at them jumping immediately into a shield wall here to take the uh, oncoming fire but let's reset this so we're going to another engagement here but this time i've chosen the square formation so they are going to use their shields on all four sides of this formation to try to keep them in as best unit cohesion as possible while maintaining a defensive stance against the enemy. You'd use square if you are overwhelmed with higher tier troops or overwhelmed and you have maybe a position you can use to your advantage, say a building that you can use to kind of cut off one of the sides of attack to you, or if you are dealing with aggression from cavalry. This is a really great way to just kind of densen your unit, keep a lot of aggression, and enable them to do a lot of damage. So hopefully that, yeah, they'll start to kind of come around. My unit's still engaged, and we're fighting now on all fronts. We're not just having an open portion of our line getting slaughtered. Also, the, it is kind of a little wonky because it was a weird uh, lopsided engagement, but everyone's shields are up. They are trying to maintain this square. Look at that. So they're trying to keep that fight going, Anyone who tries to wrap around, they've got pretty good coverage on them. 
and it's left a very interesting little like pocket here of combat. So it's a great way to mitigate a larger force, or at least slow down a larger force, because you actually have the ability to defend on all sides. Now clearly, I mean, I'm not using any of my supporting units, this is just an infantry, infantry tactics section, but I wanted just to show this off nonetheless. Now another big formation is Skane formation, you use that to kind of break through, but um, my good friend Strat Gaming has done a lot of really great videos and shown exactly which formations work in which uh, situations a little bit better. And he's done a lot of numbers breakdown and everything like that. Um, I want to go into kind of more of the high level tactics of when to use these in a situational thing rather than those actual numbers. So I'm going to leave you to uh, a link to his video in the description. Please go and check out Strat Gaming as he has a great, 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 very like scientific breakdown of uh, how Skane works against certain formations and how the lines should be configured when you're fighting against large units and stuff like that. But let's move into some discussions now about horse archers. Okay, so we have our horse archers here. And by and large, I recommend that you use engage for almost every unit except for the horse archers. I press F1 and I press F3 and I let them do their thing because the AI for horse archers is incredible. It will always keep units to its left and they will fire over their left shoulder. They will maintain the distance that they need to maximize the amount of shots on target as they can. And if they get engaged, they'll pull a weapon out to fight their way out of combat. They will not stay in combat if they can prevent it. So here we go here. Uh, they'll form a natural Cantabrian circle too. You see them just shooting into these units. And this is when multiple engagements work, right? If you have your infantry pinning this, these units down, their shield wall is not going to be as effective. So you see them kind of running around. Oh, their back is exposed. Shooting them with bows and arrows. Taking as much advantage of that as they can. And, and horse archers are, are probably one of the strongest units in the game. Because especially if you play with Kazate, they've got such great skills. But they're, they're maintaining just enough distance. That they don't need to deal with it. They might get pulled into combat right there. But that's mainly because the AI gets a little weird and sticky when it comes to hilly areas. Um, if this was like a flat plane, they wouldn't do that as much. It has something to do with like the, the Z-axis for them. But they'll just kind of keep doing their thing. They will prioritize archers. They will not prioritize infantry, right? They know that there's, those shields exist. So horse archers will prioritize horse archers trying to shoot them. If they've got no better targets, they will then go to infantry. Um, and they'll try to shoot anyone that they can get the max amount of damage on. The AI is actually remarkably good at target deciding. It just kind of gets a little funky with certain navigational portions of the, of the, of the battlefield. But maybe you don't want your horse archers to kind of go to town on everyone. Maybe you want them to actually join in on the fight and actually get a little bit uh, dirty with some melee. And this can be true if you're playing, against, uh, you're playing with Kazate horse archers, which actually have really great skills. So I'm going to go ahead and press F4. And just to keep in mind, you can highlight multiple units at a time by pressing control, one, two, three, or pressing one, one, two, three, four, you know, you just, you choose from there. If you want to select everything, you'd select any number outside of the formations that you've got. So if I've got four formations and one, two, three, four, I'll press eight and that highlights all of them. And I'm not sure what that is on a console, unfortunately, but probably just a highlight all button. And I can have the ability to press F4. So they will stop firing and they look at them, just charge right on in. And then I'm going to press F4 again. And they should get out of there. Just doing, doing that kind of stuff, like the hard e-brake on the AI gets a little wonky and they kind of don't like it very much. But this also gives us some other things to take a look at when it comes to cavalry. So let's jump over to a discussion now on cav. Okay, so let's have a conversation now about cavalry. Cavalry has a lot of different things that it can do, right? You can press, you can select them. I can press F5 and they'll dismount. This can be nice to have, say, maybe a really good unit of cavalry that's great on on horse as well as on foot, like the Noble Line for Sturgia. Dismounting them can be pretty advantageous in certain situations. So you have those tools at your disposal. But you've got your typical ways to do things, right? You can press engage. They'll maintain formation as best they can, like a skein formation, which is what I really recommend when you're playing with your cavalry. And they'll charge, they'll, they'll hit against the enemy in whatever way that they can. The other one is 
charge, and we'll go over that in a second. But what I want to talk about is follow me, which is probably the way that most of us will use our cavalry as kind of large bodyguards. And follow me, I don't want you to think of it simply, they'll walk around you and that's cool. They will mirror the way that you engage the enemy. If you pull out your sword and just jump in there and jump into the fray, they will do the same thing. If you use your lance, then they will do the same thing. If they have if they have the capability to use a ranged weapon, they will pull out a ranged weapon if you're using one as well. So if these were horse archers and I pulled out a sword and shield, they would pull out a sword and shield as well. If um, I pulled out my bow, they'd keep their bow out. So as we kind of close the gap here, um, the way that you'd use your archer, your your archers, your um, <laughs> your cavalry is as you would expect it to charge into the enemy. And if I press engage, it can get kind of funky. So they sometimes just don't really do what they're supposed to do. And engage was originally intended as a way to make the unit advance in kind with the rest of its unit to maintain cohesion. It used to be that it would it would use a specific AI profile, but now you're going to go ahead and use charge here. And the way that these cavalry soldiers will work is they will charge into the enemy and to the best of their ability they will use their lance to cycle charge more and more and more. This th th this is definitely not recommended, right? They're pushing right through. There you go. There you go, good guys. And then they'll get all the way around and they'll keep charging. That's how their AI profile is supposed to work when they've got a lance like this. They don't stay in prolonged combat. They can, but they'll fight their way out to use their polearm to their best ability and try and maintain as much uh, pressure here. But the cavalry does not prioritize infantry. In fact, it's only in this situation that that's actually happening. The cavalry will prioritize archers or other cavalry because that's its role is to either shut them down or destroy archers. So you can see that they'll just kind of cycle charge through here because they will not typically prioritize this because it's, it's a higher threat range for them. They don't want to fight infantry because infantry have tall, spiky, pointy spear things that'll kill their horses. So. That gives you an idea of how you should be using your cavalry. You can put these guys um, in different formations. Like you can put them in skein formation right now if you wish. Um, charging kind of defeats that purpose. But you'd use shield wall if you're dealing with a bunch of horse archers. You can advance in shield wall with your cavalry and it actually is pretty effective. Then break shield wall into a skein or a line formation and have them charge in. It will work wonders, I promise. So that's how you would navigate and operate your cavalry. Let's jump over to the last unit in the uh, the mix with your archers. All right, stepping over to our archers, I've set them up in a position over here, and really, that's kind of it. I don't do anything with my archers outside of that. I want them to kind of take care of things on their own. So I have them fire at will, and depending on what bow they have and their range, they'll just shoot wherever you put them. The, the big thing here is you want to put them on a high ground. If you put them on a high ground with an infantry, say like right here in front, then they will take care of things as they approach in range and you don't have to do much. I don't like charging my archers because watch what happens when they charge. Like, I don't know why that guy's getting closer. There's no need. He's got a bow and arrow. You can use engage, in which case they will try to maintain a medium to max distance away from the unit. But I really find that archers are done best with just simply, I mean, see, they can even get really, they can get really wonky with the, with engaging or charging. So I don't, I don't touch engage or charge. All I do is place them on a location above so they have got plenty of vantage point over the unit, uh, over the enemy, and I just let them do their business. I have the infantry hold the line below and the archers can just shoot. It's too risky to, to have them charge or attack if I'm trying to give them specific commands. See, like, I didn't want my guys to get into close combat, and here they are. So that's how I would play with archers. Just simply place them on a high ground above uh, a, the enemy's, like, approach and have them just um, Obi-Wan Kenobi the hell out of them. Otherwise, you're just going to deal with a unit that gets... Um, slaughtered because of, of wonky AI with having to get close. Like, look at that. Again, they're over there getting close for no reason and just getting attacked. So, I would maximize my archers by just keeping them on the high ground. Alright, let's bring all this together. 
and let's have a quick little mock battle here. I set the AI, the, uh, AI up across the field here, the Sturgia versus uh, the Empire, Empire, and we're going to kind of bring online a lot of the things that we talked about. So I've set up my archers in a loose formation. My infantry is down here in a shield wall, will soon to be a shield wall, and I have some cavalry elements over here and some horse archers over here. So let's go ahead and ready deployment. And what I'm going to tell you I'm going to do right away is I'm going to, I've already set the AI profile up to attack me. So I'm going to take my archers and, and hold this area. It doesn't need to be a high, high ground that they hold above my infantry, but just enough that it's giving them clear line of sight. My infantry, I'm going to place in the field, quote unquote, right in front of them. So let's go ahead and start that portion. Oh, good. I started as far away from that as possible. You want to try and get that moving as fast as possible because you don't know what the AI is going to do. So let's go ahead and move. There we go. Okay, there we go. So with my, my cavalry, my horse archers, I'm going to let things go pretty automatic here. So for four, I'm going to go ahead and press F1 and just let them do their thing. For my uh, cavalry, I'm gonna press F6 and let them, let the AI decide how the best use the cav in the situation that they're dealing with here. Archers are gonna get in position. We already can see that their infantry is coming up on us. I'm actually gonna go into a line formation to get them in place faster. And you see that the cavalry is now split up across two separate units, which they're going to micromanage. They're going to protect my flanks with those, which is actually way better. I don't want to have to deal with that. No, sir. My infantry is getting into line here somewhat. You see my archers. I'm not giving them, I haven't given archers a single command. And they're just taking care of things or shooting stuff. And that's exactly what I want. It's exactly what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and go into a shield wall. We see some cavalry elements coming our way. My cav is going to counter charge there. That's kind of what their profile is set up to do. I'm going to have them stop. They, by doing that, they kind of set themselves all wonkopotamus there. But I'm going to throw a javelin. You see, my cavalry did not go and charge theirs. It kept itself in a good... Uh, yeah, I'm going to actually put these guys in F6. I'm, I'm not using them properly. I'm focusing too much on this. <laughs> but everything for the most part, my cavalry is countercharging theirs. Saw the charge coming in and is now going back to a secure flank. Oops, there we go. My archers are maintaining fire the whole entire time. Don't have to worry about anything. Ooh, that horse had a weird thing. You, should, that was, you see that thing? It has like spaghetti coming off of it. Shield walls, nice and big and long. I'm going to go ahead and have my infantry engage. Now, the weird thing here is because there's a bunch of cav in the way, they're not going to prioritize the other infantry. They're going to prioritize what's in front of them. But... As they kind of make room, they, they start to do it properly. You see their infantry is going to come back out. Hey, what is that? So they have 159, we have 200, so just 40 short. And their line looks a lot longer than mine. So what I'm going to do here is stretch it out. And it kind of, it's kind of risky to do it that close. But I'm gonna do it right here. There we go. If you do it that close, by the time they actually get in formation, the the enemy will be on them. We see them coming across. Keeping that shield wall up. Now, I'm gonna switch into a skein. And I want them to go ahead and engage. They're gonna get that skein formation first, and again, some some things can kind of. Kind of uh, throw them off guard, like or, uh, throw them out of whack. But there they go. Calvary's in an all-out charge over there. I'm gonna push them out of this fight. Just kind of 
kind of get them moving away. So we can watch the infantry engage. And there you go. Infantry kind of hits in those individual pockets. Now I'll have the cavalry do its thing. I'm just going to have them charge now because they've made contact. That skein allows them to wrap around the enemy. They've already engaged in the front. And now they've got a nice big long line of battle here. You should be hunting down the enemy hero if you can. My archers are back there. I kind of forgot to take advantage of them, but ideally you would move them up as your engagement would move up, or you'd F6 them. But you can see here, that's kind of roughly how you go about battles in this game. Um, there's a lot of narration going on in this one too, so it can kind of sidetrack you. Just focus on keeping your infantry, matching their infantry line as best you can. Put your archers in an advantageous situation that they can get constant shots on the enemy. Make sure your cavalry is charging, is actually kind of keeping its cycle charging going. And ensure yourself that your horse archers are using proper... Uh, keeping the proper distance. Sometimes with horse archers, um, I don't mind my dog using his uh, squeaky toy. Sometimes with horse archers, you need to kind of delegate them to a commander because it just makes it a little bit more like, oh, okay, I know nothing's gonna happen to them right now if you don't wanna micromanage them. If you're not comfortable with micromanaging and you're brand new to the game, just press F6, learn it in due time. You don't feel like you have to know how to be the ultimate banner lord commander when you first start the game. It just takes time. So. Don't worry about it. You'll get there in time. <laughs> just start with one unit at a time. That's probably my best suggestion to you is use maybe just micromanaging your infantry formation and then worry about micromanaging your archers, whatever it is. But if you have any other questions, please, by all means, go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. Um, there's plenty of stuff to go into. Maybe let me know the next video you want to know about with Bannerlord. I have already created a ton, so you can find that all linked to the er, in the playlist at the end of the video. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care.